All right, we want to look at the two sample test statistic. Um, the test statistic is a little bit messy, um, but the nice thing is, is once you have a Z score, you're just using normal CDF to get the probability you're beyond that Z score. Or once you have a T score test statistic, you just use T CDF and you can get that probability. Or we really have buttons for all of these on the calculator. And so we can calculate these relatively efficiently. Okay, so the two sample Z statistic. I will tell you right now, in all of the free response questions in the history of AP Stats, they have never asked you to calculate a two-sample Z test for means. Two-sample Z for proportions, sure, all the time, because proportions are always Z. But whenever it's a two-sample test for means, they do a T test, okay? But if we know that um, we have known standard deviation, okay? Um, there's a known standard deviation, then you could calculate a Z statistic where this is sort of like the claim of population one. This is the claim of population two. And this is what we're making our null on. Okay. The null is mu one minus mu two equals zero or mu one equals mu two. Those say the same thing, right? There's no difference between the two populations or there's no difference in means. And so really when you subtract these two, that's just from the, the null is just that it's zero. And so when we actually look at your formula sheet, you're just gonna see this in the numerator because we're checking for a difference in means and subtracting zero isn't even gonna show up, okay? Um, so just like you subtract these two, we're expecting zero, you subtract these two, guessing that the samples will come out to something non-zero and we're wondering how far, how different are they? What's the probability of getting samples differenter than ours or more drastic, okay, either in one direction or either direction. Um, this is the standard error, okay? And what we want to talk about is why is that the formula for standard error, okay? Um, so the mean, so we're basically creating a distribution where you have um, A and B, and we want to know what's the difference between them. So this is a random variable. That's a random variable. And the mu of A minus B is just the mu of A minus the mu of B. And that's what we see right here. Okay. But when you subtract random variables, we need to add their variances. So the sigma of A minus B, we add A plus B. Okay, but really, since it's divided by the square root of n, when I square it, we just get regular over n and over n. And then when I square root it, that's why we get this formula right here. Okay, add the variances. Okay, and that's only allowed when the samples themselves are independent, we can combine their variances. Okay, um, and so if the two populations are both normal, then we're good to go. And then there's the conditions that we talked about earlier that as long as you have. Um, normal-ish, okay, or the central limit theorem, then it applies to normalize these, okay? So the weird part of this is that we're subtracting the two sample means and we're finding out how far away from zero it is because the assumption is always going to be that the population means are equal, which means that their difference would be zero, okay? Um, and then the weird part is this standard error formula, which is on your formula sheet, okay? And we'll take a look at that in class. Um, so what you typically see are T procedures, because why in the world, if we don't know the mean, would we know the standard deviation? Chances are you probably don't, okay? So if you have a confidence interval, this is my point estimate for how different they probably are, plus or minus some T star, that's not surprising, times the square root of this Standard error, right? This is the standard error. And it's the variance plus the variance. We add the variances and then take a square root to get the standard deviation, okay? So hopefully that's not unusual or surprising, okay? Um, so this is where we think the true difference in means, okay? So if I made this and it's a 95% confidence interval, I would say we're 95% confident that the true difference between the two treatments or the true difference between the two populations is between A and B, okay? Um, when we talk about the T star, we pick 
the degrees of freedom equal to the smaller of n1 minus 1 or n2. So basically your smaller sample size minus 1. So whichever one's smaller, that's your degrees of freedom. Okay. Um, smaller n minus 1. Okay. The null, uh, if you're getting a hypothesis test, rather than creating a confidence interval, if you're doing a hypothesis test, we would say, and here you're wondering, is zero in the interval? Is zero in my interval? Okay. If not, no, then they're most likely different. Okay. Yes, then may not be different. There's insufficient evidence to suggest that they're actually different. Okay. So is zero in the interval? Um, here, our null is that they're equal. And so we compute our test statistic. This, we're basically subtracting zero in the numerator. So we don't even need to write that because subtracting zero does nothing. And then this is divided by the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, okay, um, of the um, difference in means of this, of this distribution. Okay, many, many distributions where you combine this random variable minus that random variable. That's the standard error of it, where we add those two together. Okay, and then you get a p-value um, from that um, t-distribution where k is the smaller of n minus 1. Okay, and so let's try one real quick. All right, so calcium and blood pressure, we talked about this earlier. Our parameter is... Um, We'll often call it mu difference is the true difference of calcium minus placebo. Okay. The hypothesis, the null is always going to be mu one or mu calcium equals mu placebo. Or you can say mu calcium minus mu placebo equals zero. Okay, so either one of those you want to do. Either they're equal, in which case when you subtract them, they get nothing. And the alternative in this case is that the calcium has a greater reduction than the placebo. Or since this one's bigger, when I subtract, I'm expecting to get a difference greater than zero. Either way, you can write it, whichever way makes more sense to you. Okay, we'll set an alpha of 0.05. Okay, the assumptions and conditions. We talked about this in the last one, but they're randomly assigned. Okay, they're independent of each other and both don't exceed 10% of the population. And we looked at the normal uh, probability plots. You could just look at a, a histogram, but there's no strong skewness or outliers. And so we're good to go. Okay, name the test. We have a two sample T test for means. Perfect, right? We have two samples. It's a t-test for means. Name your test. Okay, this test statistic is a wicked jumbled mess, right? You look at this. X1 minus X2 is the 5 minus the negative 0.0273. Gets me that. My square root of S1 squared over N plus S2 squared over N2 um, gets me all of this. Comes out to 3.2878. And then we divide and we get 1.604. Hey, look, my calculator does that way more efficiently. Okay, show you real quick. If you hit stat, you go over to tests. We want to do a two sample T test. And look, if I just punch in X1, okay, S1, N1, S, X bar 2, S2, and N2, we want the alternative is that mu1, which is the calcium, is a greater treatment than mu2. And then we're saying no to pooled for all of this. And then we calculate and you get this T value, this P value. Okay, so that's my T score, P value, degrees of freedom. They actually calculate it differently. We would use nine degrees of freedom, a smaller minus one. The calculator has this weird formula that it uses to calculate some alternative degrees of freedom. You're welcome to use this. Okay, just make sure you mention it with this many degrees of freedom on your, um, on your paper in a free response question. But look, wicked easy. I will every single day choose to let the calculator get this information for me rather than doing it out the long way by hand, okay? So now we get a p-value equals 0 0.064. And then since my p 
equals 0 0.064 is greater than 0 0.05, which is my alpha, we fail to reject the null that the calcium is equal to placebo. There is insufficient evidence to reject um, or we'll say to suggest that the calcium reduces blood pressure. Okay. Um, insufficient evidence. It looks pretty stinking different to me, right? Those are very different means. But you know what? If I just had a larger sample size, if this was 100 and this was 110, guess what would happen to the standard deviation? It would make these piles seem further and further and further apart. That's why we say there's insufficient evidence. We're not saying, oh, we agree that it does nothing. We're just saying we failed to reject it. There wasn't enough evidence. Maybe if I had a larger sample size, it would reveal that difference. But I didn't. So too bad. Insufficient evidence. Okay. So that's the process of a two sample test. Notice it is not drastically different from a one sample test. There's some messy stuff. I agree, but it's all within your grasp. Okay. Especially when you learn how to do it on the calculator. So good luck and farewell.